Among the seven festivals in three times, God appointed the festival of trumpets for us to prepare for the Day of Atonement by blowing trumpets on the first day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar, ten days before the Day of Atonement. If we look at the origin in the Old Testament 3,500 years ago, when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments for the first time, the Israelites were worshipping the idol in the shape of a golden calf. As a result of their idolatry, he threw the stone tablets at the bottom of the mountain and broke them. On that day, about 3,000 idolaters were slaughtered. After that, the Israelites completely realized that what they had done was wrong. They also realized the holy will of God, determining that they would never worship any other gods or idols except the true God. Hence, they repented for what they had done, and by the command of God who said, come up to receive the second set of Ten Commandments, Moses went up Mount Sinai on the first day of the sixth month. There he fasted for forty days a second time. After forty days of fasting, Moses came down with the second set of Ten Commandments, on the tenth day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. God appointed that day as the Day of Atonement, because it was the day when they received the forgiveness of sins from God. The Festival of Trumpets, which is the first day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar, was kept by blowing trumpets loudly to remind the Israelites, the Day of Atonement is in ten days. Let all the Israelites repent. On this festival, we should be able to preach the gospel like blowing trumpets to all the people of the world, saying, the kingdom of heaven is near. Let us repent and prepare to welcome the kingdom of heaven. Thus, today, I would like to share God's word with you with the sermon titled, The Festival of Trumpets and the Trumpet of Repentance. Let's see God's word in Leviticus chapter 23 verse 24. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 24. Say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of Sabbath rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. Do no regular work, but present a food offering to the Lord. This festival was kept in the Old Testament, and even in the New Testament, the date for this festival, which is the first day of the seventh month, has not changed. Christ changed the way of worship, from sacrificing animals like lambs and goats, into worshipping in spirit and truth, since he became the reality of sacrifice. The law of the Old Covenant changed to the law of the New Covenant. But what about the dates? God allowed us to commemorate the same dates as they were. Ten days before the Day of Atonement, a festival to announce repentance, God had the Israelites sound the trumpet to tell them to repent. Let us examine the will of God regarding repentance. Let us turn to Psalm chapter 7. Let's take a look at Psalm chapter 7 verse 10. My shield is God Most High, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. If he does not relent, he will sharpen his sword, he will bend and string his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons, he makes ready his flaming arrows. If a man does not relent, God will sharpen his sword. We are sinners who already sinned in heaven and were cast down to this earth. However, since those sinners want to be exalted, pretending to be righteous, 
God sees them and displays his wrath every day. It is also written that if a man does not relent, God will sharpen his sword and bend and string his bow. He will prepare to destroy such a person. In other words, it is written in the book of Psalms that only destruction, death and fear will exist for those who do not repent. Let's open to Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30. Therefore, you Israelites, I will judge each of you according to your own ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. What should they do? Repent. Turn away from all your offenses. Then sin will not be your downfall. God tells us not to remain in sin, not to continue committing sinful things, but to quickly turn away from that sin. God awakens us to this by saying that if we turn away from our offenses, we will not be destroyed. Let's continue with the book of Luke, chapter 13. Luke, chapter 13, verse 2. Jesus answered, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all. What will happen? Perish. Everyone. One of the most important messages that God gave to mankind in the Old Testament and in the New Testament is repentance. God said, unless you repent, you too will all perish. What did God say about the reason we came to this earth? Haven't we learnt that we came to this earth because of sin? We should acknowledge that God has given us time to repent while we are here on the earth, the time to repent for all the sins and transgressions we committed in heaven. However, we completely forget about this and want to be honored and exalted as if we were righteous while we are living on this earth, without repenting as sinners at all. We are living our lives without realizing this. That is why the Bible says, He displays His wrath every day. It is because of us sinners. When sinners act like sinners and humble themselves, God may show compassion and mercy on them, but they live as if they had never sinned. And what is worse is that they even want to be treated more highly by others. That is why God teaches us these lessons. Be humble. Become like a servant. Serve everyone. Through the festival of trumpets, we must realize why these words are contained in God's way of truth and preach to all people around the world, saying, since the kingdom of heaven is near, we must truly live a life of repentance. Let us all deliver this warning to those who have forgotten that they are sinners and deliver the message of salvation so that they can repent and be saved. Let's take a look at the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 29. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to... What has he come to call sinners to? Repentance. Jesus said, I have come to this earth to call sinners to repentance. In the book of Luke chapter 19, what did he say? He said that he came to this earth to save us. Repentance and salvation are closely related. Those who do not repent 
and those who do not realize who they really are can never participate in God's salvation on this earth. Since we are sinners, God tells us to humble ourselves. Since we are sinners, God says, you must be the ones who serve others, doesn't he? Who, among parents in this world, would be pleased when their children are in a lower position than others, serving them? Nonetheless, if we have a correct understanding of what we committed in heaven and why we came to this earth, we can ask ourselves, what kind of life should we live on this earth? In this way, even from this moment today, we must all be able to reflect on ourselves. This is why Jesus said, I have not come to call the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance and save them. This is the reason why I came to this earth. Everyone, since we are God's children, God could have us be in high positions and live an elegant life. Even though God can put us in such a position, why does he want us to live a humble and lowly life, putting us in inferior positions as servants? What all parents want for their children is to be praised and served by others. However, God wants us to be humble and put us in lowly positions. What is his will behind all this? It is because we must live a life of repentance every day as sinners, not forgetting that we came to this earth because we sinned in heaven. We are all sinners. Even though we were baptized and came to Zion, we still regard ourselves as righteous and superior to others. When a sinner lives like a sinner, others will look at him with mercy and a heart of compassion and have pity on him. However, since sinners live as if they were without sin, God says, I will display my wrath every day. This is written in Psalm chapter 7. Shouldn't we throw away such a lifestyle? From this moment today, we must first think, why did we come to this earth? Then, we will be able to humble ourselves and remind ourselves that we are sinners. This will allow us to always give thanks to God, saying, God, thank you so much. I am grateful even with this. Let's take a look at the book of Acts, chapter 2. Acts, chapter 2, verse 37. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. As we can see here, through Apostle Peter who was moved by the Holy Spirit, God is delivering to all mankind this message. When we repent, we will receive gifts, the precious grace of the forgiveness of sins and the precious grace of the Holy Spirit. Everyone, if we do not know who we were, we cannot repent. If we were to live with an arrogant mind, thinking we were God's sons and daughters, princes and princesses who used to live luxurious lives in heaven and hold our heads high, what would God say from heaven when he looks down at us? They don't even know what sins they've committed. They are still immature. We must not make God display his anger on us. God is merciful, gracious and gentle. Thus, the Bible enlightens us these lessons. Brothers and sisters should serve one another, forgive one another. Since God has forgiven our great sins, we must not become unforgiving people. That is why the book of Acts chapter 2 also emphasizes the meaning of repentance. Let's move on to the book of Acts chapter 26. 
Acts chapter 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So then, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles, I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. Wherever Apostle Paul went, he preached by saying, you should demonstrate your repentance through your deeds. He preached to people so that they could repent. God gives warning to those who do not listen to the message, repent. However, in spite of the warning, some people still easily say, if I die, I don't mind going to hell. So God gives them another warning. Let's look at Romans chapter 2 verse 5. Let's see chapter 2 verse 5. But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile, but glory, honor and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For God does not show favoritism. It is written in verse 5, because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. Everyone, we are sinners from heaven. Why were we expelled from the kingdom of heaven? In a broad sense, we disobeyed God's holy commands. We listened to Satan's words, disobeyed the will of God, and were expelled to this earth. God has once again granted his great command to all mankind, acknowledges those who obey his command as those who have repented, and is now calling all mankind into the path of truth, called the new covenant. Those who have come into the truth of the new covenant are those who follow God's will. Isn't it written in Revelation chapter 14, that those who keep God's commandments on this earth will be saved. The whole world is still full of people who have not repented yet. That is why we must now say to the whole world, come back into the arms of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. Since we are sinners from heaven, God says that we should be humble and serve others. It is all because of our sins. It is God's will for us to let the whole world know that repentance is the most important way of life for sinners to live and the duty that we must carry out. Isn't this what God asked us? Let's see Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. If we take a close look at his words in Matthew chapter 28, he mentioned, everything I have commanded you, this can only be obeyed by those who have repented. Starting with baptism, 
We must pray in the new name, receive the new Jerusalem, keep the seven festivals in three times of the new covenant, and live a life of obedience to all of God's teachings. Is there anything that can be kept without repentance? We can truly follow that path only when we repent. We should not keep the festival of trumpets every year simply as an annual event, but we should have time to think, who are we in nature? Who am I? Why did I come to this earth? Where will I go after I leave this earth? Let us consider all these matters seriously, and from this moment on, we should give up our desire to be honored and be treated better by others. We should now say, I sinned in heaven and came to this earth. So it is a great blessing that you allowed me to do this much work. Thank you so much. Those who do not realize that they are sinners can never give thanks in all circumstances. Everything would be full of dissatisfaction. Doesn't he know who I am? How can he treat me like this? Before having such a thought, please think carefully about who we are. Who were we? I was a sinner, so I'm still so grateful though I am treated like this. Furthermore, God will even let me go to heaven. If we live our life of faith with this kind of heart, we will experience the kingdom of grace every day before we go to the kingdom of heaven. We will be filled with joy every day and live without any stress until we enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. One of the reasons why people are always dissatisfied is because they don't know who they are and still have an unrepentant heart. How fortunate we are to have this kind of life right now. This summer, you must have experienced such a long summer for the first time. Have you ever experienced such a sweltering heat? It was a very hot summer for the first time in 170 years. How was this sweltering heat? It has only been a few months, but it was very painful. Then, please think about hell. It doesn't last only for a few months, but forever and ever. In order to save us from there, God came to the earth, and although he deserves to be respected, honored, and exalted by mankind, he chose the way of the cross for us, and sacrificed himself to open the way for us to live. When we think of his noble and sacrificial life, we should be able to reflect on what kind of life we should live through this festival of trumpets. Unless we fully realize that we are sinners from the kingdom of heaven, none of God's teachings will touch our hearts. We might end up only thinking, what a wonderful word God has given us. Since we do not understand why we must put those teachings into practice and why we must live this kind of life, everything will become difficult. It will become very painful to make efforts and to work diligently. We will not be joyful. We should now be able to think, I am a sinner who deserves to work much harder than this. I am a sinner who deserves a greater punishment than this. Yet God allows me to live such a comfortable life. Truly, I am receiving such an incomparable blessing and happiness. I believe this is the thought we should have no matter what position we are in right now. We should give thanks and glory to God while living our life every day. That is why in the book of Matthew chapter 28, Jesus awakened us to the fact that we can preach to others and obey his teachings only when we repent. In the book of Jonah, we can see that Jonah kept disobeying God's commands when he did not repent. Even though God said, go to Nineveh and preach my will, he tried to flee to Tarshish, a faraway city. However, 
There was a terrifying storm in the sea, and the ship he was on was about to break up. When he thought about it, he realized that this was not a natural phenomenon that was happening, but that God was shaking him. When he was thrown into the sea, didn't the sea become calm in an instant? While he was staying for three days in the belly of the big fish that God had prepared for him, he earnestly prayed to God with repentance, confessing his sin. After he repented, he was able to carry out his mission correctly. He went to preach the will of God, who told him to proclaim, Forty more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria, and the people of Assyria had tormented the Israelites a lot. When God told him to go to the middle of their capital city and shout the message, he felt so intimidated. If he were to do so, his life would be in danger right away. Anyone can easily understand his situation. However, God asked Jonah to do such a work. Jonah before he repented was 180 degrees different from Jonah after he repented. After repenting, he said, I would have died in the belly of the fish. I have gained a new life. After he confidently preached God's will, the whole nation, from the king to the youngest child of the maidservant, and even all their animals, fasted. The result was not what Jonah had imagined. The opposite happened. Hearing Jonah's warning, they all repented. Isn't it recorded in the book of Jonah that all the disasters that God planned to bring upon them were withdrawn from Nineveh because they repented? Before we repent, we judge and think about God's will according to our own standards. However, just as Jonah completely changed after he repented, we too must have an inflection point called repentance. We must all have reached that point by now. Only then will we be able to realize why God has given us this teaching and why he has commanded us to serve others, to humble ourselves, and to obey his word. Now that we know everything, who was all this for? We come to realize that God has prepared such a way for us to achieve our happiness, our blessings, our eternal life, and the forgiveness of our sins. Thus, we must give thanks in all circumstances. Think about a person who compares his life with anyone else's, thinking, he's living a better life than I. Why am I so poor? And keeps grumbling and complaining, saying, I can't do this or that because I believe in God. The world we are now entering is the eternal world. Before going to the eternal world, God prepared the earth, the city of refuge, to allow us the time to repent. Now is the time for us to be completed and fill up what we have been lacking. When a person lives for about 60 years, people say that his or her personality can be fully developed. Let us not neglect the festival that is celebrated in the 60th anniversary. Everyone, the path that God is leading, is the path that leads us to eternal happiness, so we must be able to give glory to God. Through the autumn festival celebrated in the 60th anniversary, let us all repent like Jonah and participate in the work of salvation so that we can lead many souls to repentance and find abundant, beautiful, good fruits, worker fruits, and even the youngest one. Hoping that you have received much grace, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.